Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. So today we will be looking at my latest project and it is a laser engraver slash PCB maker. That's what I'll be using it for to uh, expose the printed circuit boards. So instead of making a transparency film and placing it all in a light box and then exposing it and removing it and uh, then developing the board and etching it, I can just put the board in here put an image of the circuit board onto an SD card, put it in here and the laser will expose the photoresist and then I can take it off the machine, uh, develop it and etch it. I'm using an ultraviolet laser for that and it's a 25 milliwatt laser. But if you bought a more powerful laser and uh, not necessarily a UV, then you could use it to engrave uh, plywood or something like that. I don't think you'll be able to cut anything except paper, maybe, uh, with this setup. But the software part should be able to handle a bigger unit. I have made some videos of how I assembled this thing, and also a video explaining the software, which I made. We basically just have actuators in the X and Y direction, and then we have a transistor controlling a laser. And the software will read a bitmap file from the SD card, it has to be a specific resolution of uh, 635 uh, dots per inch. That's just the way I made it. But that could be changed, of course, depending on what you want to do with it. Then the laser will just scan across the image and expose the bits that are black, in this case. Or you can also invert it so that it exposes the white areas if you have a, a positive photoresist, for example. The machine is controlled by an Arduino Uno and I made this uh, shield or board here that plugs into it. It has two stepper motor controllers for the stepper motors and it has the transistor for turning on or off the laser here. And then it has room for an SD card reader to plug in here but I didn't have any card readers. Uh, I ordered one but it didn't come. Uh, so I'm just using an LCD screen that has one built in uh, until I get the other one. The software is still in the prototype state, so it will just uh, automatically read a file called test.bmp and it will start making that file after it uh, homes the axis. I want to make some kind of control interface where you can set if you want the image inverted or not, and also so you can set the home position so after it hit the limit switches how far out it should move in both directions. I have this hard coded into the software right now, but I want to make some kind of control interface. And perhaps also so you can choose which file you want to expose. So you don't have to call it test.bmp. <laughs> so the machine is still missing the top part of this carriage. I just need to sand the bottom of this so that it uh, it uh, pushes down against this. Right now it's a bit loose. But I I didn't do that because it uh, it works fine without. <laughs> but I will do that. Anyway, let's turn it on and see what it does. Uh, we can do that with the lights on. And then afterwards we will put a PCB into here. And then we have to turn the light off so it, it doesn't get the ambient light onto it. Uh, that will ruin the board. Oh, actually I have some red light uh, which won't uh, interfere with the photoresist. So I'll uh, hook that up and then we can take a look at it under red light. But first let's, let's take a look at what it does when we turn it on. It's a bit loud, I'm sorry about that. It homes the x-axis and then homes the y-axis and then it moves out 5 millimeters, and then it starts printing. I made it so that it moves slowly when the laser is on and moves rapidly when it's off. So I got the red lights turned on here. Uh, the camera adjusted so it doesn't look that red. But you can see now the red pieces look white because of the color balance. <laughs> Anyway, let's place the the PCB in there. 
and I'll just give it a piece of tape so it doesn't vibrate around. And now we will start it. So this circuit board is not very good. It has some bubbles in it, but I hope we will be able to see the result anyway. So these loud clicks that you hear, you might think that is the stepper motor missing some steps, but uh, it's not. I've checked it already. I think it's actually the uh, Arduino that has some internal interrupts going on that kind of messes with the uh, steps that I give the motor. So it's finished and um, you can see it is quite slow. Uh, I haven't optimized any of the uh, yeah, scanning path yet and it's only printing in one direction and then it's going back and drawing another line, going back, drawing another line. I could change that of course so it does uh, both directions um, but I wanted to be sure that there was no backlash in the belts and uh, that's why I chose to do it in one direction to begin with. And if we turn on the regular light you might be able to see that the areas that the laser hit uh, has become pink and uh, or purple maybe it looks on the camera. So now I'll go and uh, dip this in the developer and uh, we can see the circuit. And this PCB is actually inverted because I'm using a positive resist so I should have exposed the areas that I uh, wanted to wash off. So now the traces will go <laughs> and that's not what we want but it's just a test anyway. And the developer for a positive photoresist is just uh, sodium hydroxide. A very weak solution else it will uh, remove the parts that you don't want to remove. So here we have it after it has been in the developer and uh, I noticed right away there is one mistake. There's a dark line going through here which shouldn't be there. Uh, what I think happened is that the uh, the Y carriage here maybe bound up and then it made a jump. It is a little bit uh, on the snock side so perhaps I should uh, disassemble it and uh, sand these holes a little bit more. The other one that I did before turned out very nice so it's Unfortunate that this one <laughs> got a line in it when I had to show it off. But anyway, that proves there's still some things that need to be uh, tweaked a little bit. And also the laser makes the traces a little bit too wide, so it doesn't leave enough in between. I don't think I can focus the laser any better than it is, but I could do something to the software to give it a little bit more room uh, in between. Uh, apart from that, I think it works very nicely. Uh, and I could uh, definitely see this being used in the future. I will try and uh, speed it up a little bit and see if it will still expose correctly and maybe it will uh, it will remove some of the overexposed uh, traces so the traces get a little bit thinner. Also I can give the laser a little bit more power than it receives right now uh, and still stay within the specifications. It's rated for about 200 milliamps and I'm giving it uh, 150. So I'll try and do another one and then we'll speed it up a little bit and see if it will uh, expose it better. Uh, this could also be the tape 
uh, that released actually I didn't notice if uh, if they were both still on there so I changed the exposure time now it only gets half the time that it did before So I went and did a few more tests here. The one on the bottom is the one we had a look at before. And this one is with double the speed. You can see the only difference is this vertical line here is a little bit thinner on this one. There's a lot of bubbles in the photo resist up here. So it's hard to see the actual quality of the exposure. Uh, the next one I did, I uh, messed up the timing a little bit because I changed the wrong number uh, but that was but that was three times the speed uh, I then uh, corrected I accidentally deleted the delay between the steps so it it kind of got messed up uh, this one is also three times the speed I don't know if it shows up on the camera but it didn't quite clean up uh, where the bubbles are where the resistance a little bit bigger so I think three times is pushing it a little bit. But I think if we increase the power of the laser to the rated 25 milliwatts, then we can at least go double the speed like this one. I didn't have any problems with the y-axis on uh, these other attempts. So uh, I think it might have been the tape that had a bit of tension and it released uh, suddenly. But I'm not sure, I'll have to test it a bit further to confirm that. I think I'll just go and change the software very quickly so that it also draws on the way back. Um, it shouldn't take long. And then we can see if that has any significant impact on the time it takes to draw the image. I bet it will speed it up quite a bit because it takes about a second to go all the way back. If you only have a couple of places that you need to draw, like uh, here for example, then it will take almost as long going back than it does forwards. So if we can draw in both directions, that will be better. So I tried to make it print in the opposite direction as well, but I had to give up on that because the Arduino Uno simply doesn't have the memory to do that in any way. Even for this very tiny circuit board, it couldn't store one line of the image in memory. And that was even after discarding the color information so the only thing that it had to store was if there should be a pixel or not. I could have made it work if I used every single bit of all the variables but then I would have to make some kind of function to store them and some function to read them back and I wouldn't be bothered to do that because if the PCB got just uh, three times wider than this one it wouldn't have worked anyway it would run out of memory. There was still one option, which was to um, make a program on the computer that would rewrite the file, so invert every second line, but I didn't want to do that. It had to be so you can just load an image and then put it into the machine. But it could be a fun project to use a more powerful ARM processor, for example, and then load some lines of the image into memory. Then we could remove some of the exposed pixels so that it would make the tracks uh, the correct size so it won't uh, overexpose it like this. It's not really that difficult to do, it's just that the Arduino Uno simply doesn't have the memory to be capable of anything like that. The IC that you see in here is a 20 pin SSOP package and that's actually uh, one of the smallest ones that I like to use at home. So I definitely won't use anything smaller than that and as you can see, it would just separate the pads so that it uh, it would be usable. So that could work. But what I like to use at home for surface mount components is uh, SOIC packages. And if we take a look at this, you can see the pin spacing is much bigger. And it wouldn't be a problem for an IC like this. 
and if you take a look at the header here that would be the same spacing as a dip package anyway i think this is it for this video and if you liked it please give it the thumbs up and thanks for watching if you want the stl files for some of the 3d prints uh, i'll put them on thingiverse and i'll put the software on my website and also remember to check out the other two videos if you want to see how i made it they will be uploaded within a few days of this one. See ya!